Hey yo everyone, welcome to another redstone maze generator in Minecraft. What you see in front of you is a maze being regenerated every 4 seconds or so using a variant of the recursive division algorithm. Um, like my previous video with the depth first search algorithm, this algorithm creates perfect mazes, which means that any two cells within the maze have exactly one path connecting them, and there aren't any loops or any parts of the maze, any cells that are cut off from the others. Um, so I will cut to a brief explanation of how this algorithm works and then dive into how I implemented it all in Minecraft. As I mentioned a moment ago, this generator uses an algorithm similar to recursive division. I've decided to call it Hilbert division because it reminds me of the space filling Hilbert curve. Each step in this algorithm, we take our existing maze and we split it into four smaller sub mazes. Uh, we connect those sub mazes at three points, but leave one side completely cut off. We do that again for the existing smaller mazes, and we repeat that until we're down to just our 2x2 two two maze, which turns into a little U-shape. And we repeat that for all of the sub-mazes until we've filled the entire area. As you might guess from the nested nature of the maze itself, the redstone also has a nested nature. So in the center here we have this green module that divides it into four sub-mazes, and then each of those sub-mazes has this yellow module that divides it in four again, and the orange divides it in four again, and finally these red modules are the two-by-two two mazes that just have a single wall closed and the other three open. Because the redstone is basically the same, I just have a single green side here to show you how it all works. So the first part is the direction randomizer that chooses which wall is completely closed off, and then we have in each of those directions a randomizer that chooses which of the single walls is open. Um, so for the direction randomizer we just have this hopper clock. Normally it's frozen by these redstone torches, but when this line goes high everything gets inverted and the clock is allowed to run. And when this line goes low, wherever it stops is the direction that will be completely closed off. Uh, because hopper clocks are um, have a set time, there's not any randomness to how long it takes the items to move around, there's also this layer here that when this pressure plate is pressed, it locks the clock as well and that allows the clocks to become desynced as all these chickens run around and step on pressure plates, leave eggs on pressure plates. Um, it just allows all of the different modules to become desynced from each other over time. So if the clock freezes on the direction we're facing, the signal gets inverted and there's no redstone going down this line and so none of these pistons get extended. If we stop somewhere else though, we invert the lack of a signal, and so a signal gets sent into this dropper, and we have a chain of droppers and hoppers that each one chooses whether this piston gets extended or the signal gets propagated to the next one. So starting here, we have this dropper, has seven wooden shovels and one plank, and one of those items gets pressed into this hopper. Uh, that means there's a one in eight chance of getting the plank, which has a signal strength of one. If this dust is powered and this isn't, we have essentially an AND gate here that would then power this piston. Uh, but in this case, we got a signal strength of three, which passed it on to the next dropper. This is the same setup, there's just one fewer shovel, so it's a slightly higher chance of getting the wooden plank on the second one. 
and so on down the line. Each one has one fewer wooden shovel until we get to the end tier where there's just one shovel and one plank. If you multiply all the probabilities together, you just get an even 1 in 8 chance for each of the pistons to be extended. So the overall maze just has four of these forming the green module in the center. The yellow modules snugly fit into the four corners, and so on and so forth for each of the sub-modules, until we get down to red, which doesn't have to worry about choosing a door that's open. It's just if the redstone is powered, the door is closed, otherwise it's open. Quick channel update. Part of the reason I haven't uploaded in a while is that I've been teaching myself game development in Unity, so keep your eyes peeled for some devlocks coming out soon. Uh, in the short term, I used Unity to create the maze generation tool I used earlier for the algorithm explanation. And with this tool, there's about a dozen different algorithms that you can uh, watch as a maze is generated. You can step through it one step at a time to get a better idea of what's going on and how the algorithm is working. Or you can just skip straight to the end to see what a finished maze looks like. With each of them, you can also look at what the solution to that maze is to get an idea of uh, what the maze looks like. So there's a link for that down in the description. Uh, no download required. It all just runs in your browser. Um, but yeah, other than that, thanks for watching and hope to see you all soon.